Hey everyone, welcome to Our Small Footprint. My name is Nissa, and if you're new here, we are a family of eight who live off grid in Australia. So today's video, what was in today's video? I made sourdough English muffins. I haven't made English muffins in ages. I don't know why. It's like bagels. I haven't made bagels in ages too. I'm gonna have to do that. They're just so time consuming to cook the next morning. But anyway, I did sourdough English muffins for breakfast, and then I made smoothie pops. So we buy the silicon molds from Kuvings, I'll try and remember to put a link in the bottom. And they are great. They're reusable. You use normal paddle pop sticks, which can then be thrown in the compost. Um, or, you know, if they're not going to do too much damage wherever they end up. And then I make them in bulk and the kids can eat them. And it's really great portion control for smoothies. Uh, so we made a whole bunch of them up and I thought I'd share them with you. And I'll share the, the supplies that I use as well. And uh, so yeah, that's these for today. So enjoy watching and I will see you again tomorrow. I think tomorrow's video will be the food hamper <coughs> video, um, the community care, food hamper, food truck, food pantry, whatever you want to call it video. So we'll get that to you then and I will see you again later. Thanks guys for watching. Today's tasks were smoothie pops, but first of all, I was going to start out with breakfast. So I made sourdough English muffin dough uh, the night before, as I normally do. I like overnight doughs. So I made it the night before and left it on the bench overnight to use in the morning. So I'm not fussy with the shape of my <laughs> sourdough English muffins so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to roll the dough out or pat it out whatever you want to however you want to do it you want to gently sort of maneuver it into uh, the correct thickness and once you do that you're supposed to use a round cutter and you cut your circles out to cook and then you re-roll the dough that's left I'm not pedantic about having round English muffins and that's a lot of extra time and effort so what I do is I just roll it out into a rectangle and then once it's in a rectangle I cut it into squares so I just eyeball it they're never the same size shape whatever it doesn't really matter and I just cut them into approximately similar square sized shapes to use to cook. I use semolina on the board and semolina on top of them when I'm handling it and that gives it a nice crispy uh, texture when it's cooked as well uh, and then I just cook them from that point. So when I cook them I do them in a cast iron pan with a lid. I have done them on baking trays as well. It takes a fair bit longer per batch to cook and uh, my with using the whole barbecue as an oven thing I decided I couldn't be bothered arguing with it so I did it in the pan with the lid on so I just place the uh, English muffins into the pan nice uh, hot pan not excessively hot medium medium high place it into the pan with gaps around it and then put the lid on uh, the they take about four to six minutes on each side to cook depending on how hot your pan is so you have to find the happy medium that they cooked for long enough that the inside is cooked but that the outside edges aren't burnt uh, so it will depend on what you're cooking in whether it's cast iron or stainless steel and it'll depend on your stovetop so I check them and flip them see the color looks right see that they look like they've puffed up that sort of thing uh, and just do it a little bit by eye the first few you just gonna have to try and figure it out for your heat and then cut them open and you'll be able to tell if they've done the right thing or not uh, English muffins are supposed to be sort of light and airy inside sort of craggy like big holes in it uh, and if they're undercooked they'll be dense and that's not what you want in an English muffin so I check it and flip it and then I check them if I need to if, like if my timer goes off and I sort of look like they they should have been ready I will check them again uh, as I said I use semolina on the dough and that stops it from sticking to the tray as well uh, he then I remove them once they're cooked onto a cooling rack and replace with more muffins and keep on going so it can be time consuming it's sort of six ish minutes six ish to eight minutes per you know pan full uh, and then you <clears throat> have to do however many you do so it can be time consuming but I tend to just sit there with a book and read while I'm cooking them uh, and then once they're done they're all just stacked on the tray 
uh, the on a cooling rack and they're good for a couple of days uh, they're always nicer retoasted when they're co when they've gone cold as most breads are but they're um pretty good for a couple of days uh, this is what they look like when they cut open these big open airy craggy spaces that is supposed to catch all the things they're really nice with uh, jam and stuff on them but uh, we eat them savory most of the time so I served these up with eggs and bacon and some homemade duck egg mayo for breakfast well lunch sort of after we had eaten it was on to the smoothie pops so the way I make these is I basically make smoothies in my thermomix and then I freeze them in molds. The base of a lot of these are kefir so I had my kefir was ready to be strained so I poured it through the colander and got all the kefir off the grains so that I could reuse the grains uh, and then I pour the grains back into the jar that it originally came from and add milk. So this jar I really like because I can use a full three litre milk in it and this is what we the only thing that we buy fresh milk for because uh, kefir grains don't particularly like UHD milk there's just not enough living whatever it needs in there it it will keep them alive but it's not great so I buy uh, these milks or Daryl does from town for me once or twice a week uh, one or two a week depending on what we're making and we use them for this so I refill with the three liters and then it gets sit, it sits out at room temperature until it has fermented and then I toss it in the fridge until I need it next first up I had to get the pineapple that was frozen off the trays because I was going to need these trays to use to put the molds on in the freezer so I got all the pineapple off the trays and stuck them in a ziploc bag so I reuse these ziploc bags for all my frozen fruit um, and then get them get that aside and then I put the molds on the tray I find that's the easiest way to carry them from the kitchen bench to the freezer is either on cutting boards or trays or whatever I just find it the easiest thing to use so I put the molds on the tray um, and then this the first batch that I made I did a pineapple banana coconut so I used kefir as the the base and then I used the frozen pineapple that we had just pulled out of the freezer frozen banana that we had pulled out the other day and then coconut cream you can add any flavor you want you can use canned fruit you can use frozen fruit you can do anything it's just a smoothie uh, I if I make a smoothie in a jug the kids are going to drink that entire jug in one sitting that jug of smoothie can make a couple of days worth of smoothies even if they have two a day so basically it's just portion control to make that frozen fruit last longer and it they feel like it's a treat uh, I put the sticks in the mold so these molds are from Kuvings I'll try and remember to put a comment a link in the bottom and they had some new ones released and a 30% off sale or something so I grabbed a few extra ones as well which is partly why I'm making them uh, and so they have sticks that come with them that are slightly shorter than an average paddle pop stick but the cheap paddle pop sticks that you can buy food grade ones from eBay or anywhere else work perfectly fine as well you don't have to buy the specific Kuvings ones but because I bought new molds I got a whole bunch of them with it so fill the mold I find transferring the smoothie into a jug that has a good pouring point is a good thing the thermix pouring point is a little wide it's a little hard to get it distinctly in the molds so I pour it into a jug that has a slightly narrower pouring point and I pour it into the smoothies if the smoothie mix is quite thick you need to sort of like then push on the sticks a little bit just to lift them up so to make sure the smoothie goes underneath uh, pick them up and give them a little bit of a, a tap on the bench will let the smoothie settle as well uh, but it's really fairly irrelevant it will go where it needs to go as it melts uh, I did add a little bit of water to this particular smoothie mix just to make it easier to get in the molds the um, and then once I fill the first layer of molds, I put a piece of baking paper over the top and put more molds on top. So I'm limited on freezer space and all that sort of thing. So I find by layering them, it works the best. Uh, I did a second batch of smoothie, which I used frozen berries and frozen banana, some of the coconut cream, kefir, all the basics. Uh, sometimes I add chia seeds or hemp seeds or some almond meal or even oats. Uh, sometimes I sprinkle bits of something in them bits of nuts in them like a bit of um, I've done a peanut butter one with um, 
crushed nuts in it. Uh, the custard one's really nice. Like if I make a custard like you make an ice cream from, like a chocolate custard, that's really nice, but it's not real healthy. So the idea is that by being smoothie pops, they feel like they're getting these awesome treats and they're really just smoothies. There's nothing bad in them, nothing, you know, it, it's, it's a treat without being a treat. And I really enjoy that sort of thing to be able to offer it to the kids so that they feel spoiled. They feel like they're asking for something that, you know, is special and that sort of thing, but it was some, it's something that they would get every day, no matter what. So every now and again, I do make a chocolate custard one or something like that, just something rich. It's like a chocolate yogo, a dairy-free chocolate yogo. It's really nice, but it's not my preference to make that. Uh, so they had uh, the new molds that I got too from Kuvings have lids on them. The old ones did have lids, which would be really great, but my children tend to lose them. So uh, I do try and store all the empty molds and the lids and everything in the freezer. I find that if they pull one out and then they immediately put it back in the freezer, then it stays clean. I know where it is and that sort of thing, but they're children and sometimes they don't make it back into the freezer they end up in a tupperware cupboard or whatever else and it just yeah they go missing so i do try and i would suggest it too if you've got the space just stack them in a corner of the freezer it keeps them clean uh being silicon stuff sticks to them so in our house if they go in a cupboard they end up covered in dog hair because dog hair floats everywhere so highly suggest keeping them in the freezer <coughs> Uh, so I filled all the second lot, I don't even know where I'm up to anymore, but I filled all the second lot of moulds and stacked them as well and got them in the freezer. So that is what I did. And this is what they look like once they're frozen. The kids have eaten a large portion of them, so I'm only showing you what I can find, but this is how they come out of the freezer and the kids really enjoy them. So thank you very much for joining me again today and I will see you again probably tomorrow. I think tomorrow's video will have the food hamper, the monthly community care food hamper in it. So I will see you then and uh, have a great weekend guys.